You couldn't ignore me if you tried. And I'd like to dedicate it to a young man who doesn't think he's seen anything good today. A million dollars isn't cool. You know what's cool? Elder hey, God! Ladies and gentlemen, we are back. All it took was 15 months, one global pandemic, and for me to get out of a specific contract, but we are back with a brand new episode of Biopic. Welcome. Give yourselves a hand. Give me a hand. Like I can't believe that we're here right now um, with some Biopic, and today is a great episode, a really good one. Uh, I couldn't think of a better way to get us back on the wagon right? That's a phrase. Um, because today's biopic, uh, which by the way, if you're, if you're new to the channel, biopic is where I talk to my favorite people about our favorite movies. Um, one thing that's very important to the Dylan Barry network to Dylan Barry himself, uh, is that he loves movies and that he won't shut up about them. It's all he watches. He has a hard time getting into TV shows. He loves movies. And, uh, today we got a, a really, really special person, uh, on the show. And, uh, he needs no introduction because I, he doesn't deserve one. And uh, it's, it's very, whoa, whoa, it's whoa. very, it's very fitting that I wouldn't give him an introduction. Right. Uh, no, but he's a guy I've known since I was a sophomore in high school. Uh, he went to school in his own house. Uh, been a good buddy ever since we've been talking movies forever. This will be normal, natural. Josh McGuire. Welcome. to Hey, well, uh, I mean, it's great to be here. Took you long enough to get back recording took you long enough to have me on but uh you know i've been i've been listening i've been uh been loving the dbn for a while so glad to be here love that man yeah we're, we're doing this live on zoom um and because everyone is quarantined right now we're about like eight weeks into stay-at-home orders uh, across the country across the world um and yeah you know what better way to you know spend all, all it took you to come back was to be really bored yeah, I'd be really bored, have a lot of time on my hands. I've been watching a ton of <laughs> movies. I think I've watched uh no joke 30 movies during the uh during the pandemic wow, so far. Wow. So we're doing good. I, actually, I might I might I might be up there. I might be yeah. up there. And uh the reason uh Josh you're here not only is cuz you're great at talking movies, but it's it's the movie that we're going to be talking about. We always have a headliner movie along with the headliner person, and that is The Social Network. The Social Network mm -hmm. um recently came to Netflix. Uh if you have Netflix, it is streaming on Netflix debatably maybe one of the best movies on netflix and it turns 10 years old this year uh the social mm -hmm. network one of my favorite movies um it's in our theme song if you uh could catch it in there in the biopic theme song we'll be talking about the social network um as well as the top five our individual top five movies of 2010 and boy is that a tough thing to do maybe the toughest top it five it was it was a good year it was a good year for movies. Great year for movies. And I think um, this top five will be tough. Like I had, to, I had to write honorable mentions and I think I maybe have like 10 honorable mentions that I'm like, I yeah. have to mention. That. Most of the big so, movies that came out in 2010 were, were just great. Yeah, we're great. It was, it was a phenomenal year. Um, Social Network and all these movies will turn 10 this year. So it's fitting to talk about it. But before we get into that, Josh, here's what we do on uh, biopic is, uh, you know, bring you on here. And it's really the movies that make up you, okay? You know, if we're talking Josh McGuire, these movies make you up. And so the way we get into that is we do Desert Island 5, okay? So I give, I've given you time to prep. Mm -hmm. What was it like coming up with your Desert Island 5? And then we'll get started. Yeah, yeah. I, I had to think about it more, uh, not the top five greatest movies I've, I've ever watched. Uh, not, some of these might not even make, probably won't make people's lists. But they're, they're five movies that either impacted me in a big way, I've loved for a long time, or I would just love to rewatch over and over if I was stuck on a desert island for a long time. Love that. Love that. All right. So well, let's get into it. Uh, what is your first choice? Yeah. Uh, the first it, doesn't choice, mean, it doesn't mean it's your number one, but it's yeah. the first one we're going to talk about. First choice, I know you'll approve of. Um, it's a classic. Um, and especially in this quarantine, we're at home a lot. Um, it just seems fitting to pick Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Yeah. yeah, yeah that yeah, yeah. is a classic movie. You can rewatch it a million times, still quote it every, ta every time, yeah. and it just doesn't get old. It's fun. It's got some, some depth to it. Yeah. You, you get to attach the characters a little bit, but yeah. it's lighthearted. Uh, you can watch that a million times. 100%. It never get old. 
Yeah, that's my uh, anytime I'm sick at home, which uh, I think I was sick three times in January. Um, I had three sick days I had to call in. I, I think I watched Ferris Bueller every single day. Like it, it's a part of my routine. You have to. Like I have to watch it because it's like this thing. And since I was a kid, Ferris Bueller is my hero. Still to this day, 25 years old, like I want to be Ferris Bueller. Um, and yeah, no, he, he's a character that is just so beloved like everyone loves him everyone wants to be him his sister hates him because she's not him and he gets everything he wants uh he's just but he's probably gonna be a fry cook somewhere as cameron says but ferris will be all right yeah. um you know, you know ferris reminds me reminds me a lot of you oh it's got a lot of charisma uh, but uh <laughs> but where is he going really you know <laughs> <laughs> no, that's real. Uh, yeah, no, that's real. Uh, yeah, Ferris Bueller. It's a great choice. John Hughes. Yeah. Um, do, you, do you have like a favorite moment when you think of Ferris Bueller? Because I mean, there's so many good ones. And I think, yeah, a few big ones. Yeah, yeah. I've, I always loved the, uh, the parade scene. You know, as long as I know him, everything works for him. There's nothing he can't handle. I can't handle anything. School, parents, the future. Ferris can do anything. I don't know what I'm gonna do. College. Yeah, but to do what? What are you interested in? Nothing. Me neither. <laughs> You're crazy! <laughs> what do you think Ferris is gonna do? He's gonna be a fry cook at me. Great, the, the song, you know, that, that um, Twist and, and his. Shout. Him, yeah, twist and shout. Him dedicating it to Cameron. It, it was a, it was a great moment. Who uh, says he hasn't seen anything good today? Now, Ferris Bueller, another one in our biopic uh, theme song. So you're yeah, yeah. you're doing pretty good already. Yeah. Um, okay, Ferris Bueller. That's a great choice. That's going to keep you laughing, keep you loose. Uh, yep. But it's also timely. And then I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go straight into really serious, really heavy. I just watched this uh, a little bit ago, and man, I forgot how good it was. Um, it will keep you on the edge of your seat. It will make you cry. It will make you wonder like what happened to the time that I was watching this. Cause it's yeah. a long movie, but then you come out thinking you're in another year and that is interstellar. Interstellar. Okay. Interstellar. I, I, I legit watched this a while ago and I had the lights off middle of the day watching this movie. It's a three hour movie. And I get to the end of it and I don't know if it's the same day or if it's like 80 years in the future, <laughs> but it was, uh, but it was great. Um, it, it's thrilling, but then there's those moments like with the, the recordings from his kids, oh my gosh. Finally his daughter, where you're just like, you're crying, he's crying. Uh -huh. Like I don't cry in movies, but that's one of the few moments that I can rewatch and, and cry every time because it's so relatable. Yeah. Even though he's, Millions it's, of light years. You say, is, how is it are you relatable? Have you been on like a mission like that before? Yeah, I, I've been in the same situation. <laughs> Okra no, fan. Even, even in that situation, like it's relatable. Yeah. It's crazy. Just like crazy yeah, missing the time of like your kids growing up, you know, like that's kind of the big thing. Um, yeah, a really great cast in that one. You got a young Timothy Chalamet who's in that mm -hmm. movie. Uh, a lot of people don't remember. Um, of course, Matthew McConaughey putting the uh, the team on his back there, especially that scene alone of him just crying watching his thing. I think oh, that yeah. is the that's the scene I think about, and then I think about when they're on the planet with the giant wave, uh, mm -hmm. like that one. I remember watching, just being like, "Oh my goodness!" Or, yeah. gosh, the whenever they I think they go down to that planet and they come back up, and that one uh, scientist yeah, like has been up there for years. Yeah, he said, I've been waiting for you for years. And it was yeah. like 23 years later. And that's where he gets those, all those tapes. And it's, yeah. it, it's, it's nuts. The, the ending is crazy too. Like yeah. he comes back to his daughter, who's now probably like 50, 60 years older than he is. Yeah. And 
she did all this stuff and it, it, it's nuts. And like, she's there with his, her whole family. Um, and he's still young and then goes and like does whatever he does and like restarts the human race. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's going to be a great sci-fi adventure. That'll keep you thinking that uh, when you, when you pick a movie that's long, you, you then like, you'll catch things as you rewatch them. Um, there's a movie that might come up a little bit later also by Christopher Nolan, uh, that starts with I N, um, ends with inception inception like it's another one uh you know you're just gonna get so many different things out of it as you watch it um he's always gonna make you think chris is always gonna make you think he is and he's got this new movie coming out this summer or supposed to come out this summer in tenet um that is like time it's like a, a mix of inception plus interstellar with time and then like heist movie and it's it's one of those kind of like when interstellar came out and Inception, you saw the trailer. You didn't really know what it was about. And then you left the theater and you also didn't know what it was about. And then maybe you saw it again. <laughs> and then you understand yeah. a little better what, you, what it was about. Yeah. Um, Any Christopher Nolan movie, you're always, even even watching like the Dark Knight trilogy, yeah. you're still trying to figure out like what exactly is happening right now. Yeah. You have to watch it a few times. I still don't know what caused all that stuff in Interstellar. Like why are they right. fleeing Earth? Never, right. never got brought yeah. up, but we don't need to. Yeah. Yeah, it's it just keep yeah. He gives us the details we need, not the ones we want. Yeah. That's a good one. Uh Interstellar and that soundtrack too, you know, uh the score, mm-hmm. I mean, just the uh, crazy loud organs and it's just like super intense. Uh um, like on the, when they're on that wave planet and uh yeah. each tick is like was it like a month on earth or a year yeah, on earth? Yeah, yeah. So much detail crazy. with the Hans yeah. underscore there. Yeah, it's a good one. I think Interstellar, I think I need to, I actually recently just bought it, but I think I need to give that one a rewatch um, because when I think of Christopher Nolan, I don't even think that makes like top five for me um, mm. because with Dark Knight, The Prestige, uh, Memento, Dunkirk. Actually, Dunkirk to me was one Ooh. that was like really amazing um, because it was everything. It was. Yeah, it like it also played with time, but it was like uh, – like it wasn't an old movie because it was only 90 minutes or whatever. And then mm-hmm. it was a war and there's all these stunts and CGI and yeah, um, that was great. Tom Hardy. I mean, no one can do space. Space. <laughs> yeah, he can. that's true. Uh, all right. So you got Ferris Bueller, you got interstellar. Yep. What's your next one? All right. So I'm following it back up with another classic fun movie. Um, still continuing with the time thing. Cause okay. why not? Um, this was a movie for me, like growing up, I just, I, I loved it. This was like watching superhero movies to me. Um, Cause I, I, I just, I ate this stuff up. Anything yeah. to do with time travel, especially. Okay. Um, and that's back to the future. I was going to say, we got a little bit of a teaser, I guess, right behind you. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Back to the future was always amazing. Um, it was fun. It was, um, it didn't take itself too seriously, um, but it still had a great story. Um, Marty McFly is again, like, like Ferris Bueller, like one of those just really quintessential, like cool characters. Yes. exactly. Uh, and yeah. Like who doesn't like back to the future? hundred percent. Uh, so far I could definitely say I could live on your Island. Uh, you know, you're, you're speaking that my language. Yeah, uh, yeah. So far. All right. Uh, put the brakes there, buddy. <laughs> we'll see what no. I, we'll see what I do with the last, last two. <laughs> back to the future is, uh, yeah, truly an all time favorite of mine as well. Um, yeah, I mean, those, again, two kind of just crazy characters, one mad scientist and one cool teenager. It's like that's a weird combination, but it works so well. John Mulaney has a bit all about someone pitching the idea of the Back to the Future and how just absolutely bonkers that is. Um, and even like like they say it in the movie, but like making a time machine out of a DeLorean and like DeLoreans were like a failed car at that time too. They were stylish, yeah. but they were a failed car. Uh, it was just, but it also oh, looked you. futuristic. So it worked. Yeah. Marty, <laughs> you made it. Yeah. Welcome to my latest experiment. This is a big one. The one I've been waiting for all my life. Uh, well, it's a DeLorean, right? Stay with what me, Marty. All your questions will be answered. Roll yeah. tape. Okay. And we'll proceed. Uh, Doc. Uh, is that a Devo? Never mind that now. Never mind that now. Not now. Not now. All right, I'm ready. Good evening. I'm Dr. Emmett Brown. I'm standing on the parking lot at Twin Pines Mall. It's Saturday morning, October 26, 1985. 1.18 a.m. And this is temporal experiment number one. Come on, honey. Hey, boy. Get in there. Ah, no, boy. In here you go. 
Sit down. That's your seatbelt on. That's it. Whoa, whoa. whoa. Okay. Please note that Einstein's clock is in precise synchronization with my control watch. Got it? Right, check done. Good. Have a good trip, Einstein. Watch ahead. Get that thing hooked up to the car. Watch this. Yeah, okay. Got it. My calculations are correct. When this baby hits 88 miles per hour, you're gonna see some serious shit. structure of both Einstein and the car are completely intact. Where the hell are they? The appropriate question is, when the hell are they? You see, Einstein has just become the world's first time traveler. I sent him into the future. One minute into the future to be exact. And precisely, 1.21 a.m. in zero seconds, we shall catch up with him at the time machine. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Doc. Uh, are you telling me that you built a time machine? Out of a DeLorean? I then, love, like, that movie, um, it took, like, t- I think it was, like, 10 or 20 tries uh, of pitching that to studios to get it, to get it greenlit. And it took, um, like, most studios, it was too innocent, and it wasn't, like, edgy enough for comedies at that time. Wow. They pitched it to Disney, and they looked at, like, him in the, in the car with his mom and the incest. And they were like, nope, we're not touching that. So it took them like a ton of time to get that movie made. Yeah. But it just worked. It was imperfect, but it worked. Yeah, and it worked and it was magical. And even like like that, like hearing that said out loud, that sounds crazy and it sounds ridiculous and it is. But like for some reason it works because like when you go back in time, like that's not your mom right now, you know? And yeah. like, it's funny and it's like, it just is like, man, what if I could go back to see what my parents were like as kids. Like that's what we always imagine when we're in high school and whatnot. And yeah. to be able to see that. And then he rocks out to Johnny be good uh, on stage. Gosh, dude. It's, it's yeah. Such I love the part right after he does that. He's going back to like, back to meet doc to go back to 1985. And he tells his parents, he's like, Hey, if your kid ever, um, fire. ever destroys, it's sets fire, fire to the, the, yeah. the rug. Just go easy on him. Go easy on him. <laughs> like if you had one, if you had one time, you could go back to your parents' high schoolers and be like, "Hey, if your kid ever does this, just just go easy on him. Just go easy on him." If he says, "I'm moving to New York or I'm moving to Los Angeles," go easy on him. That's what I would tell yeah, Chris yeah. Barry if Chris Barry yeah. was uh, if I went back. But yeah, the it, it's a, it's a great movie, and we got some good sequels. Like good meaning that like we just got to spend more time with the characters, not necessarily. Mm-hmm 
better. Like I would say Back to the Future 1 is the best one. And yeah. it does have the originality factor. But I, I really enjoy 2. I really enjoy 3 because it's uh, – it's unique it definitely goes like oh whatever but it's great yeah yeah three like i would never i wouldn't put it in the same in same category as one and two yeah um i think two is still on a really like original level yeah still not, not as good as number one ambitious um, sure. um, but yeah like you said you you yeah um but you you get to spend more time with the characters explore the, like alternate history which is really fun yeah um, so yeah great great trilogy all together and the original Back to the Future will always be on my rewatch list. Gosh, yeah. Even there's that opening scene I'm thinking about, you know, like all the clocks ticking and then he's like, you know, I'm late for school. And then Huey Lewis and the news just starts playing and he's just yeah. riding a skateboard. He's of course grabbing onto a truck, you know, as he's riding through town. It's just, it's. That's another thing I love. Like that same scene, like in, in certain scenes throughout the first movie keep happening again um in right. both of the sequels right like he has a similar like grabbing onto someone's truck and like following it through town in in the second movie uh, there's manure. those little things that just keep happening the manure yeah uh that, that keep happening that's yeah. great uh all right good you're, you're again three for three for me uh but let's hear what's your board yeah um and i don't think you'll be disappointed with this one either uh because i know you like this movie um <clears throat> back on the back on the nolan train the man that okay. can do no wrong. Okay. Um, Cause I had to, you know, we have a little, we have some intense action, thriller, emotional stuff. We have some lighthearted movies. Um, but what is movies without some, some superhero movies? Mm. Superhero movies have, have spread across our, our culture the past 10, 15 years. They're a genre now, officially they're a genre. Yeah. 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 So now you have to have those in, in, yeah. in your, uh, in your list. Um, and I don't think there's still a better superhero movie. I love the MCU. I love it all, but I don't think there's a single better movie than the dark Knight. the dark Knight. All right. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll take it. It doesn't, it doesn't begin at all. Batman no. begins was good. The dark Knight was the best part of that, that trilogy. 100%. I love, I love, I was thinking about it the other day. Like, <laughs> You think of the uh, original Spider-Man movies, the live-action Sam Raimi Spider-Man movies. Yep. Toby. Yeah, Toby Maguire. The third one flopped because you had too many villains, right? Yeah. Christopher Nolan somehow found a way to get like three or four villains yeah. in one movie and make it work, make it cohesive. It made sense. And it's just, it's just amazing. Heath Ledger, you'll never have a Joker like that again. Mm-hmm. It's a great movie all around. Yeah, um, a great review of uh, the Dark Knight is we did an episode of Biopic with Michael DeConti. He we covered the Dark Knight for its anniversary as well. Um, but yeah, another one that was just so it's it's pretty timeless. And um, like it's funny on YouTube, it happened last week, but I get movie clips that pop up on my YouTube and like suggested. And any time I see the opening scene of a Dark Knight, I have to watch it, and it's like just so beautiful so well done mm -hmm. and it's this yeah. bank robbery that is just perfectly set up and like gives you the character of the joker for the rest oh, yeah. of the movie to know that he is so on top of things it's so chaotic he's gonna get in a bus and he's gonna go on he's gonna drop a little line he's gonna get away scot-free and yeah. it was just mm, amazing yeah. uh it, it's yes i agree i think it's the best superhero movie that that we've seen um i would actually uh, argue that joaquin phoenix is joker it's up there it's, oh mm. it's close it's, it's, it's I, don't, a, I don't think it's heath ledger it's a completely different take on the joker just sure. like jack nicholson's was a different take jared leto was not even the same you know i, I hate it. i even brought his name up i'm just yeah. i feel bad that i did that <laughs> um but yeah, this is, a, this is a great movie. I can't say enough good things about The Dark Knight. That's another score too, where I'm like, I'm oh, Ron yeah. Zimmer and Nolan. That's name a better duo. I can't, you know, Pippin, yeah. Jordan, Zimmer, and uh, Nolan. Those, those two. Yeah. It's, it's the same wavelength. Yep. Yep. It was an amazing movie all around. I, I think like just the Joker's performance or Heath Ledger's performance as the Joker, he like, he had all, all the other jokers have had like different elements that they excelled at, but I think he balanced those all together. Like it yeah. was controlled chaos. He had 
the humor, but in like the dark twisted way that the Joker like is yeah. supposed to have that humor. Yeah. And I think he balanced those two things really, really well. hundred percent. And great action too. In some of these sequences, um, you got big time actors in this movie too. Michael Caine, oh, yeah. uh, Morgan Freeman, of course, he's Heath Ledger, Christian Bale, um, and you know, Maggie Gyllenhaal, which, you know, okay. You know, well, hello, beautiful. Right. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> shout out. But uh, okay, the Dark Knight, the Dark Knight. Okay, so again, this is this seems like a great island to be on. I'm not gonna lie. To yeah. You. Like uh, I'm gonna do well. Maybe if I'm on my island, I can come on over to yours. Check out. Yeah. Check yeah. Out we have movie. we have islands near each other. We can watch but, those movies. But you got one more movie left. One yeah. more movie. All right. And this but, this might be the one that that r- goes off the rails a little bit. Good. I, I don't think I, um I don't think most people would say it's a bad movie. Or not like it. I just don't think it's on a lot of people's radar. Um, but I love, like, a lot of these are already, like, coming-of-age movies, that whole type of genre, which I love. Like, for some reason, any watching any of those movies when I was, when I was a kid, like, that was like, okay, I want to go out and live. I want to go do things. Um, yeah. And the one movie that I watched in high school and kind of gave me that more than anything was The Perks of Being a Wallflower. Mm, okay also new to netflix yeah. it came on the same time as a good yeah a little bit ago but i have like i have the, the dvd of it i have the vinyl mm. of the soundtrack nice it's got a bunch of old really good music um and i have the book i read the book which is yep. a really good adaptation to film like i think they yeah. did it really well that's not always done well but they did a really good job there yeah um but yeah it just it has a little bit of everything it's yeah. few young kids dumb kids going through life figuring out high school how to live how to love figuring out how to love yeah. yeah um and it deals with some really dark topics but does that in a really a really good way yeah. um but yeah i i love that movie yeah i was having a conversation with a friend about this because like you said like they kind of right at the end there it gets heavy um and uh, i had mentioned i was like i saw i saw a tweet that said like oh wow they just really threw that in there uh, just surprised you. Um, and my friend said, she's like, well, that's kind of how that type of situation works is it's under the surface for a long time. And then mm-hmm. it comes out and it's like, oh, shoot, that's been the underlying thing this whole time. And yeah. you know, usually in movies, it will leave crumbs to lead you there. But this one didn't leave you crumbs no. to get there. And I don't remember the book doing it as much. Um, no. leaving crumbs. But then but yeah, no, this is a really great coming of age movie. I think if I was going to the 2010s and was like, you know, best coming of age movies of this decade. I think that's in the top 10. I think it is. Yeah. Um, because I'm just like you. I love coming of age movies. Logan Lerman is phenomenal in this. Emma Watson, uh, oh. incredible. Yeah, that was good. I had lunch with Craig today. Yeah? He said he was sorry and that I was right to break up with him. I'm driving away and just feeling so small. <laughs> Asking myself, why do I and everyone I love pick people who treat us like we're nothing? We accept the love we think we deserve. I was gonna, I was gonna, I was gonna bring her yes. up before this is over. Yes, you have to. Uh, I d- her English accent, you know, is something I could pick at, but or well, yeah. it's okay, you know, or American accent, I guess. Um, Ezra Miller, uh, of course, hilarious, oh, yeah. is so fun. You just want to be around him, and gosh, yeah, it's a good. Yeah, movie. Ezra Miller might have like tied that movie together 100%. without his like weird off the wall uh, mm-hmm. behavior. Like, yeah. I don't think that movie would have been as interesting to watch. And a lot of times he was the one driving that forward. Yeah. And it's all, I mean, it's all a movie that's about belonging. And it's like uh, when he finally belongs is when he feels the most self. And even that scene where they're all giving each other gifts and stuff, you like, that's a really great scene of like, um, just feeling a part of something bigger than you. Cause everyone knows each other and everyone knows which gift you would like. And uh, yeah. 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 And that, that like, for me, like I watched that in high school when I was yeah. like finding a place, finding a people that like were my people. Um, oh. so that was like a great, like that, that's why that movie is on my, my desert Island. Just cause it, I think it meant that for me was like, wow, I found people who like get me 
who I can be myself around. And like, that's what he found in the movie. Which is pretty cool. hundred percent. And yes, great soundtrack. Uh, the, the scene at the dance, that's another one of just coming out of your oh. shell. And like, there really is something <laughs> contagious. Yeah. About being around people who are out of their shell and are crazy and are not afraid to be themselves. And so, yeah, I think that's why that movie works so well is because, uh, yeah, Paul Rudd is the English teacher with the yes. line, right? The line. We I feel like love. that, like you have like funny Paul Rudd, like goofy Paul Rudd. I feel like that, like that fits Paul Rudd, that English yeah. teacher, like yeah. kind of a dorky guy, but yeah. nice. Like that, that, that character fits Paul Rudd really well. Paul Rudd, totally. Just English teacher. <laughs> <laughs> Paul Rudd, the English teacher. Yeah. Oh, that's so good. Um, yeah. All right, so you, we have your five then. Uh, yeah, we got to round it out. Um, Ferris Bueller um, was, was going to be in there. Great pick. Interstellar, Back to the Future, The Dark Knight, Perks of Being a Wallflower. Pretty, pretty good, pretty well-rounded. You got some good coming-of-age movies. You got a fun movie in there, an intense movie, a few intense movies. Yeah. Um, dang, this, this feels pretty good. All right. All right, well, that's great. Josh, here by Judge Island 5. We're going to take a break, but when we come back from the break, uh, we are going to be reviewing um, 2010 David Fincher's The Social Network. Um, and I am very, very excited about this. And then after that, we'll be doing our top five of top five movies of 2010. Let's get it. We got a lot. We I got mean, a lot to do. We do have a lot to do. Better get to work. Um, gosh, I'm trying to think of a social. A social network reference that can send us in here <laughs> give me a second uh you know josh talking to you is like talking to a stairmaster no that's not it that's not it that's not <laughs> it uh that's not it um it's okay we'll, we'll be right back <laughs> to do something substantial in order to get the attention of the clubs. Why? Because they're exclusive and fun and they lead to a better life. People want to go on the internet and check out their friends, so why not build a website that offers that friends, pictures, profiles. I'm talking about taking the entire social experience of college and putting it online. The site got 2,200 hits within two hours. Thousand. 22,000. This idea is potentially worth millions of dollars. Millions? You stole our website. They're saying we stole the Facebook. I know what it said. So did we? A million dollars isn't cool. You know what's cool? A billion dollars. You're going to get left behind. It's moving faster than any of us ever imagined it would behind. Let's sue him in federal court. I can't wait to stand over your shoulder and what you write as a check. If you guys were the inventors of Facebook, you'd have invented Facebook. Is there anything that you need to tell me? Your actions could have permanently destroyed everything I've been working on. We have been working on. Did you like being a joke? Do you want to go back to that? Mark! time you're being accused of intentionally breaching security violating copyrights violating individual privacy your best friend is suing you for 600 million dollars as for the charges i believe i deserve some recognition from this board uh, i'm sorry yes i don't understand which part I don't well, welcome back to Biopic. I uh, hope that break was nice for you. Um, and right. all right, so we got the social network. All right, so a little bit yep. about this movie. 2010, uh, directed by David Fincher, who also did movies like Gone Girl, Seven, um, did uh, Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. Um, what was the, the big Zodiac? Okay, David Fincher, great, great director. Yep. And then, of course, written by Aaron Sorkin. Um, this movie won Best adapted screenplay because it was um came from the book accidental billionaires which i recommend if you love this movie read accidental billionaires um the accidental billionaires and uh yeah the social network josh you this is a movie i've seen hundreds of times i own it i have like a special edition of it um you is this the first time you watched it recently -ish? um it's the kind of it's one of those movies i had seen in the background kind of um i knew bits and pieces of it um but hadn't really watched it all the way through. And I think when people talked about it being such a great movie, I was always really confused because if you're not watching that intently, yeah. um, it's easy to get lost. A lot yeah. of it's, you know, loud music around the characters. You don't, yeah. uh, you have to be paying attention. So I think I wasn't paying attention and I didn't understand how great it was. Yeah. And then you recently, re you watched it. And then it I recently rewatched it. And, and yeah, it is, it's amazing. 
Amazing. Um, yes. Good. It, it's always fun to see like the behind the scenes or a little bit like what you would have hoped that, you know, building a company like Facebook or like these, these big things that we know and are part of our life. Yeah. Um, it's always cool seeing some like behind the scenes to it. Yeah. Um, and that does that, but in a really dramatic way, um, a, yeah, just a really cool way. <laughs> yeah. Uh, for me, I, I rewatched this movie actually a year ago. Um, but I recently did a deep dive into a documentary on the making of it and, uh, read the book too. Cause a year ago, actually Mark Zuckerberg stood in front of Congress about the big, leak of information and all that stuff which is crazy to think this movie came out in 2010 and facebook was such a big deal even then that now facebook owns instagram facebook is this thing that is leading the charge in a lot of ways with getting information out and even like affecting our elections Mm -hmm. like like for facebook to still keep living and doing so well is absolutely insane but for me this movie is phenomenal because it's not just a story about starting website Um, it's a story about ego. It's about relationships. And like, you just see on every single character's face, the need and the want to be like, great, which of course Mm. as a three, I love that. But like, and it's done in this cool stylistic way where the storytelling is from, uh, these two lawsuits that are happening, uh, later on down the road after it's been created. And it's looking back, telling two different lawsuits, one, from the two co-creators and then one from the Winklevoss twins who, you know, said that they uh, invented Facebook, came up with the idea of Facebook. And uh, yeah, it's crazy because this movie, like you kind of pick sides throughout it where you're like, oh, he's crazy. Oh, wait, he's got a point. Oh, you know, that's interesting. Oh, that's sick. And like, it's just a movie that it, 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 you were to tell me it's a movie about creating Facebook, which I remember that was the thing. Um, that sounds so boring. Like that sounds oh, yeah. like, wow, there's a tech company getting started up, but there's so much drama. It's very and I think, far from it. <laughs> I think the, the score drives it, the intensity behind the way they shoot some of this stuff, whether it's the rain or the walking and following them. And like just the tenacity that this movie holds is like, inc- it's just, it's crazy. Yeah, I, I love it. You you come out of it with um, you respect Mark Zuckerberg more. Yeah, um, and you're like, wow, he did a lot to get to where he is and and get Facebook to where it is today. But then you also like, wow, that's a messed up human being. I don't know if I would ever want to like hang out with that person. Yeah. But you have a lot of respect for it. Like yeah. it, it's it's nuts. Like yeah, it does that with every one of those characters. Where like you have you're on their side for part of the movie, then you're on their side kind of switch back and forth and you realize like they all did some crazy things. They all worked really hard and they all um, like, came up with something amazing. Yeah. But they're all, they all did some like dirty things to get to the top. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, they all just had their own motivations, even like, you know, from the opening scene to like, he's got to go home and start blogging. <laughs> and then, oh my gosh, this thing that he now realized he can create, he shifts it into this idea that other guys were talking about maybe and then boom it's the site and then starts doing well he drops out of harvard uh he brings in a guy who had a huge viral phenomenon and napster with sean parker and blows up more and then as it gets bigger tension starts growing between these young 20 somethings like they're really 21 years old and they are found it like being a part of the biggest website that might exist right now um, in terms of social media, of course. But uh, yeah, it's just absolutely phenomenal the way the story is told. Um, Yeah, I I think the big things I like, I think it's the dialogue anytime they're talking to each other, like the the metaphors they use and the quick snappy back and forth, Mm -hmm. uh, just incredible. In the back to the, uh, in the behind the scenes thing, it talks about David Fincher. He likes to do like a hundred takes of one scene. So that opening scene, they did it a hundred different times. Um, wow. and they had shot it with two cameras going at the same time. Usually they would do one and then switch to the other, but they did it both times because the dialogue is so snappy. It's so back mm-hmm. and forth. Um, and especially that opening scene, like that's another great one we talked about. I'm not speaking in code. Erica. You're obsessed with finals clubs. You have finals clubs OCD and you need to see someone about it. We'll prescribe you some sort of medication. You don't care if the side effects may include blindness. Final clubs, not finals clubs. And there's a difference between being obsessed and being motivated. Yes. 
There is. Well, you do. That was cryptic, so you do speak in code. I didn't mean to be cryptic. I'm just saying I need to do something substantial in order to get the attention of the clubs. Why? Because they're exclusive and fun, and they lead to a better life. Teddy Roosevelt didn't get elected president because he was a member of the Phoenix Club. He was a member of the Porcellian, and yes, he did. Well, why don't you just concentrate on being the best you you can be? Did you really just say that? I was kidding. Although, just because something's trait doesn't make it any less I want to try to be straightforward with you and tell you that I think you might want to be a little more supportive. If I get in, I will be taking you to the events and the gatherings, and you'll be meeting a lot of people you wouldn't normally get to meet. You would do that for me? We're dating. Okay. Well, I want to try and be straightforward with you and let you know that we're not anymore. What do you mean? We're not dating anymore, I'm sorry. Is this a joke? No, it's not. You're breaking up with you me? You are going to introduce me to people I wouldn't normally have the chance to meet. What the f... What is that supposed to mean? Wait, settle down. What is it supposed to mean? Erica, the reason we're able to sit here and drink right now is because he used to sleep with the door guy. The door guy? His name is Bobby. I have not slept with the door guy. The door guy is a friend of mine, and he's a perfectly good class of people. And what part of Long Island are you from? Wimbledon? Wait. I'm going back to wait, my door. Wait, wait. Is this real? Yes. Okay, then wait. I apologize, okay? I have to go study. Erica? Yes? I'm sorry. I mean it. I appreciate that, but I have to go study. Come on. You don't have to study. You don't have to study. Let's just talk. I can't. Why? Because it is exhausting. Dating you is like dating a stairmaster. All I meant is that you're not likely to... Currently. I wasn't making a comment on your parents. I was just saying that you go to BU. I was stating a fact. That's all. And if it seemed rude, then of course I apologize. I have to go study. You don't have to study. Why do you keep saying I don't have to study? Because you go to BU. <laughs> you want to get some food? I'm sorry you are not sufficiently impressed with my education. I'm sorry I don't have a robot, so we're even. I think we should just be friends. I don't want friends. I was just being polite. I have no intention of being friends I'm with you. I'm under some pressure right now from my OS class, and if we could just order some food, I think we should be... Look, you are probably going to be a very successful computer person. But you're going to go through life thinking that girls don't like you because you're a nerd. And I want you to know from the bottom of my heart that that won't be true. Be because you're an asshole. Mm -hmm. Um where like we're just getting to know Mark. Like Mark is clearly oh, like yeah. his brain's all over the place. He is quick, he's snappy, and like she just seems like a pretty normal person, you know, who you would love yeah. to have get drinks with. Like I would love to get drinks with Rooney Mara, uh, if you're listening, Rooney. Um <laughs> and but like Mark clearly is on a different page because he's talking about three or four different things at once, but he knows exactly what's going on. And he clearly doesn't have social cues maybe to pick up on if someone is trying to say something. Uh, yeah. And yeah, it's it's just incredibly so well done. And each scene is just like, it's so uh, it's handled that with that much uh, delicacy to, to make it great. And you, you see that with all the scenes of, you know, Eduardo storming in at the end, uh, even coming out, out in the rain, uh, all their pitch meetings they have. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's good stuff. Yeah. I, yeah. I love like, it, it's, it just, ke it keeps you on the edge of your seat the entire time, which you would never expect from a movie again about creating Facebook. It's, but it, the way that dialogue moves now, punchy it is the music, the score behind it. Score. Um, oh, so it, it, good, it yeah. just moves in a way that you're like, Oh wow, what's going to happen next? I love there's this, there's this moment like in kind of the middle of the movie where um, back at the beginning of the movie to get that app running, the, the face swap app running, um, Eduardo has that algorithm that Mark yeah. needed. And that's yeah, really yeah. what kickstarted that whole thing. Yeah. And then once they're back, they go out to, to California to get it really up and running yeah. and Mark and Eduardo are looking at like the office and they're like, he's like, wow, you remember that? In the window you remember the algorithm? Kirkland? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and like, even though he had already kind of betrayed him at that point a little bit, like that was them like remembering their roots, remembering their friendship. And yeah. then it goes South again from that. <laughs> no. Yeah. Next. No, it's uh no, I, I totally agree. There's so many different callbacks uh, throughout the entire thing. Um, like even the I'm CEO, right? You know, like that, that was a conversation mm -hmm. that we saw the fruit of a little bit later on. Um, and it's, it's just such a, a well-rounded movie. Even the fact, like, oh, one of my favorite scenes, favorite moments is when 
um, Bill Gates comes and speaks. And then uh, those two girls are like, Facebook me later. And they're like, yeah, freaking out. like, oh, Facebook me. And they have that moment with the girls in the bathroom stall. And they're both smiling out there because they're becoming celebrities. Yeah. And like every the, the, the website is known across campus, uh, maybe even multiple campuses at that point. And then he sees uh, Erica. He sees Erica in the wherever they are. And he goes and talks to her and she's like blowing him off. And she says, have fun with your video game. You know, like totally. Yeah. Like, d- he finally it. thinks he's got it. Yeah. And, and then, then, then she, he just brings him right back down. Just, just the moment where he goes to Eduardo and it's like the whole celebrity, the whole buzz of that night goes off. And he says, we need to expand. <laughs> like, yeah. to me, it's just like, uh, even just like, oh, someone shot cry. me down. Yeah. Someone shot me down. We got to do better. And even the way the ego plays into it for each person, like, uh, like Mark obviously is upset. He wanted to be in finals clubs. That's the first thing we learn about him is final. We, yeah. I need, how do I get the attention of the finals clubs? And then when, as Eduardo is uh, getting better and better with the Phoenix and rising, um, you can tell every time they have a conversation, Mark is more motivated to keep going and keep creating something better. And Eduardo like talks about it and he's like, Oh, that, that's cool. You shouldn't be mad if it doesn't go any further than that. And then just back to work. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, Eduardo's yeah. just like, oh, okay. Um, cool. And Eduardo, you know, like this is the one thing maybe, uh, I, not that I don't like, but I would have liked to see more of is Eduardo mentions it a few times, which maybe simplicity is better, but he talks about his dad and there's clearly a relationship there. He's like, mm. you'll know, this is like, this is going to mean so much to my father and like my father, this, my father, that. I would have loved to hear more about Eduardo. Um, yeah. Because yeah, I think, yeah. I think Eduardo is, is that like character, he's off to the side. He's like, as, as much as you know about him um, and as much as he drives the story, um, he's kind of just off to the side, but like always seeking attention, like yeah. whether it's the attention of his father or even of Mark, yeah. like he's, he's a- telling him that stuff just because he wants someone to like, listen, give him a pat on the back, congratulate yeah. him. Um, yeah. And, and Mark he- doesn't. So he just gives him more money. Yep. And he clearly gets insecure there towards the end, freezing the bank account and just this intense moment. Like he froze a bank account and like you feel the weight <laughs> of like, dude, this is like crazy. Um, yeah. like, like how could you do this? And with all of that, like them building up, you wanted to end the party at 11. Like that was uh, <laughs> like, I wanted to, I wanted to pay for the party, you know, like, yeah. Again, yeah, that dialogue incredible. And Justin Timberlake, like maybe the best cast he's ever been in any movie and will oh, ever yeah. be like he yeah. is Sean Parker. Uh, it's like the one time where, cause he's kind of playing Justin Timberlake maybe a little bit <laughs> like, he yeah, to dig deep for Sean Parker, which is cool. Um, but yeah, dude, just so good. That whole dinner scene, the, the scene in the club is absolutely like incredible. Cause the music's loud. It's not apologizing. It's not being like a normal movie where it's like, wow, we can hear him perfectly. They're actually yeah. screaming to each other. Yeah, and and you have to like listen really closely, turn yeah. the volume up, rewind yeah. a couple times to figure out what exactly they're saying. Even just anytime you talk at a club or a bar anywhere, like I mean, a few months ago, but like <laughs> to where you can see their veins popping out of their neck because they're trying to communicate so badly this yeah. thing, um, and just the story of Victoria's Secret, uh, like it all yeah. just leads to my dates are Victoria's Secret models. <laughs> He's like, okay, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's anything to get anything to get Mark's attention at that point. So good. So if I go favorite moment, performance scene, for me, I remember what stood out to me last time. It, it is that opening scene. I think it is. Uh, I've already talked about it a little bit, so I won't go too much. But like, it, just the snappy dialogue and the exposition we get from there, um, and it leads us into him creating face mash, which just gets us going. Um, cause right now we're just seeing just two college kids at a bar, but we learn their personalities, his mainly through this conversation because he was just so clearly brilliant, but also like something wasn't right there, but also brilliant, you know? And, uh, yeah, I think just going into the behind the scenes, I just, I love that scene. So many great quotes dating. you is like dating a stairmaster. Um, you know, <laughs> people, uh, He's like with genius IQs and he's like clearly talking about himself and he got a 1600 on the SAT and uh, yeah, just, just yeah. so good. And it's like yeah. him clearly being insecure. He's like, we only got in here because you slept with the door guy. And he's like, the door guy's my friend. And he's like, oh. like yeah. <laughs> yeah. That whole, that whole opening scene and the first couple scenes where he like 
sits down and creates that is amazing. Yeah. I think the, uh, the best part for me was kind of the middle of the movie when Eduardo first comes out to California mm-hmm. and realizes that they've just been on this like party, like grinding, getting Facebook out, but also partying and just going crazy. Um, and he feels really left out. Um, and then he's like, Nope, I'm out. I can't do this. Goes back to his like crazy girlfriend who he doesn't call and then like starts lighting his things on fire. Yeah. Um, and then Mark finally convinces him like, no dude, like we got, we got the investors. Like yeah. you have to come out. Um, I just think that whole, like probably like 10, 15 minutes yeah, that's was probably one. the most like crazy um, action packed part of the movie, but it also like starts to rebuild and then really crushes yeah. Yeah. Mark and Mark and Eduardo's friendship. Yeah, because in that one conversation, he says like, "Eduardo, how could you? How could you do this? The whole thing falls apart. That's the only thing that keeps us different. This and that, this and that." And he's like, "I know, I needed to get your attention. This and that." And he's like, "Well, who cares? It's all right. Um, we need you out here because like we're about to get yeah. like, a lot of money and this and that." And yeah, you're right. It is this turning point where it's like, "Okay, cool. We're we're all gonna be all right." But then no, it's not no. all right. Which no. I do want to give a shout out to Brenda's song. You know, London Tipton. Really yes. took a different turn in her <laughs> career in this movie. I'm thankful for it. Uh, she did great uh, in her role. But uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's good stuff, dude. All, all performances yeah. across the board. Army Hammer should be mentioned too as the Winklevoss twins. Uh, just yes. unreal, dude. Unreal. Good, yes. good movie. Uh, and a little, great movie. little trivia too. The, uh, mm-hmm. Aaron Sorkin, the screenwriter, he is in the movie too. He's, a, he's oh, really? the guy. Yeah, they're pitching to him. And that's when Mark is like, doing the the and he's like, oh, he's like sorry what is that is that a tisk what is that that's the screen that's aaron sorkin yeah so. nice there, there's that for you ladies and gentlemen from the dbn uh Love to it. you Love all right it. so finally a rating we usually do out of five uh, you can use decimals if you want um you know how you felt about this movie letterbox of course josh you're on letterbox i'll link your letterbox in the description i'm gonna teach you how to use it <laughs> josh maybe yeah. i'll do a video maybe i'll do a video you, about you all can learn with it. me Yes, we'll come all learn together. Uh, what would you give this movie? Ooh. Um, I, always, I always feel like I give movies like too high or too low of a score than they deserve. Um, so for the sake of not giving it too high of a score, I'm going to go 3.8. 3.8 out of 5. Out of 5. Yep. Great. Yep. So I'm going to give it a 5 out of 5. Because okay. I think it's a perfect movie. <laughs> I think it's perfect. I think uh, this movie's great. I think I could watch it anytime, any day. I like constantly am craving it. Like if movies were easiest to consume as songs, it would be a song that I'm like a never skip. This would be a never skip. This would yeah, be a, yeah. If it's on TV, I gotta finish it. Uh, but yeah, yeah. I, I think the only reason I don't give it like a higher number is mm-hmm. I don't think there's necessarily anything wrong with the movie that I didn't like. Yeah. Just for me, like, I think you relate to that movie on a much, like, deeper level. I think yeah. you, like, you feel some of the, the feelings that the characters have in some ways. So you, <laughs> uh, you, you put that movie a little higher um, where I wouldn't, but still a phenomenal movie. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, that may or may not be true. I don't know who I am if I'm <laughs> Divya Rendra or if I'm, you know, Emily Albrecht. Uh, but yeah. All right, so you got 3.8, I got five. One of us is right, and it's the host of this show. Now, okay. uh, here's the thing. Here's what I want to talk about. It is I'm going to, do, I'm going to give you five f- things about this movie, and you have to tell me if they were real or not. And you're totally guessing here. You don't know, but I, I pulled up some facts about this movie, and basically these were found outside of the script and outside of the book, The Accidental Billionaires. Um, okay. And so you have to tell me, was this real or was this fake? Did this really happen or not? And this, all the stuff that happened in the movie. Okay, so first one, um, Mark Zuckerberg uh, in the movie, he goes and he has a meeting in his pajamas. Um, do you think that really happened or do you think that's Hollywood? I want to say because of this setting, yes. Because you're bringing it up in the setting, yes. But knowing like seeing interviews with mark zuckerberg i don't think he would actually do that i think that seems a little too outrageous for him to do so you're saying fake so i'm saying fake you are incorrect uh <laughs> it's true he did it it was inspired by sean parker um 
he he said, oh, sorry, I showed up late. And it was a total like flex uh, yeah. by Mark Zuckerberg, but he did show up in pajamas. This is all oh, I could a- see it. I could see it 100% working. I just didn't think Mark Zuckerberg would have done it. Yeah. Uh, apparently all, all throughout the movie, his wardrobe is very accurate. And I think okay. uh, like, oh, wow, how he'd wear the flip flops and just the hoodies, and just the yeah. gap, all that stuff. Like that was right on. Um, okay. Uh, so you're wrong. You're 0 for 1 right now. Here all right. Go. Facebook was created because of a breakup. Um, drives a lot of the movie. Um, I'm going to go with, I, I feel like I've seen that that's actually how it happened. I'm going to go with yes. Uh, yes, you're right. That is real. So uh, he created Face Mash because of it. So it all got yeah. started because of a breakup. Her name was actually uh, Jessica P. Uh, so he did go home and he did blog Jessica P is a bitch and I need to do something to take my mind off this. Like that's a real blog and he was uh, drunk and then he he made a face mask. But actually he started dating his wife, uh, his current wife, his hmm. only wife, um, like right after face mask, but before Facebook. And so through okay. the whole thing, he had been dating his uh, his current wife. So in the movie, uh, Erica is this thing that like keeps motivating him. And at the end of the movie, of course, he's clicking refresh, refresh hoping to get a friend request that is hollywood um okay that's not quite but it was a breakup that led him into doing face mash which that initial night at least yes happened from the breakup okay uh one one two so good job uh third number three eduardo's story of forced cannibalism chicken feeding the chicken the chicken was that real or fake oh because it was the it was it was mark that in the movie, it was Mark that um, planted the story. Planted the story, right? Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go with, yeah, that seems a little random to be Hollywood. <laughs> so it's wrong. It's, it's actually, it was, it was a way, I think, to make Eduardo human um, it, for the book and for the, uh, so apparently the Phoenix did uh, get in trouble, that um, finals club, because it was uh, torturing chickens. And so there okay. was an article in the Crimson about the Phoenix, but re- nothing about Eduardo specifically. I think they used that just as a way to like have Eduardo have that thing. And that's a good okay. moment in that movie too. So it was taken, it was taken some from something kind yeah. of real, but from something, but it, Eduardo hasn't fed chickens to chickens that we know. Of. Uh, okay. okay. So enough. did uh, true or false Ricardo uh, froze the bank account. That was a real thing that happened. Is it real or not? Ricardo? Eduardo. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> oh. Eduardo. I don't know why I said Ricardo. Oops. <laughs> All right. So, so did Eduardo freeze the bank account? Um, I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with yeah. That seems like something he would do. It is. He he did freeze the bank account. Mark was furious. He had to use his personal money, so they were fine. But he did freeze the account. You know, he put it in detriment. Also, another thing. Yeah. Um, this was really interesting. But in the movie, they say that his shares were from like thirty something percent down to point zero three percent, which is the whole thing. He actually only went down to ten percent. Uh, in the movie at 0.03. So again, a little bit of Hollywood in there to make it more like, yeah, which I mean, 30 to 10% is a huge leap, especially when it's a company like that, that you were at since the beginning. Um, For sure. But yeah. But I mean, Hey, 10% of Facebook, what's, what's that today? Yeah. If that was me knowing the future, I would just be like, Hey, (laughs) dude, if I'll take 0.03% of Facebook, I'll take that share right now. (laughs) All right. So, all right. You're two for four. Okay. All right, number five, Mark Zuckerberg had a business card that read, I'm CEO, bitch. Ooh. Is that real or was that fake? Um, again, maybe I just don't think Mark Zuckerberg is as ballsy as the movie portrays him, but I don't think he would have done that. But yeah, so, so no, Hollywood. It's real. It is real. Yeah, uh, yeah he did. He, apparently, when he was young and at the start of it, he had two business cards. Uh, one that said, you know, CEO, Mark Zuckerberg, but one that did say, I'm CEO, bitch. It was like, because I mean, it's funny when you're 23 years old and you're running that, like, of course, yeah. that's going to be your thing. And if you have that much confidence in yourself, like, I'm sure yeah. that's uh, how it works. All right. So, so what I've learned is don't doubt Mark Zuckerberg. Don't doubt Mark he Zuckerberg. He will do all the things that I don't expect him to do. That's 100% right. Um, yeah, so it, I guess it, 
leads me to one question I, I was thinking about um, is, do you think in your personal opinion, like we should look to movies as um, history lessons or as movies? Because like, um, I think some people leave certain movies where they're like, oh, well that didn't really happen like that. Yeah. So I don't really like that movie because that's not how it really happened. When it's like, no, if we were to just watch this story, um, like if you were an alien and you were to watch the story, you didn't know anything about Facebook or whatever. Um, and if I would have told you this movie's fiction, like completely fiction, um, and you were to watch it, it would be a complete full movie with motivations yeah. and conflict and this and that. But because it does handle things that are have worldwide implications um, and a, an actual legal suit that was hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars, yeah, uh, I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, I uh, I think I see both sides of it. I, I hate when there is a, a great movie that was based somewhat off of a, a true story, and then people throw it out the window because yeah. it wasn't one hundred percent historically accurate. Yeah. So I think I think there's a there needs to be a lot of leeway in there. Like you can't just throw out a movie because yeah, there's a couple things that didn't actually happen in real life. Like that's never going to happen. Like yeah. you're never going to have all those little conversations and all that stuff. You don't know what happened there. Yeah. But um, I think the one time where it starts to get like, yeah, I, I don't like this movie or, or it drops my rating of the movie because it's inaccurate is when it changes bigger um, story pieces. Yeah. Like one, one movie that uh, teetered on this a little bit ago was Bohemian Rhapsody. Right. Talking about Queen. Um, and I still liked it because I think like, yeah, those didn't happen in the sequence that it portrayed in the movie. Um, and obviously it was just sped up, but I still think it was a cool, fun way of telling their story. So I still liked it, but a lot of people didn't because it completely flipped around some of these events to make it more of a motivation. Yeah. Um, so even, even that movie for me wouldn't have done that, but if you are taking big elements of that story and adding or taking from it because it's more enjoyable to watch, then I think it's, yeah. Right. No, I think, I think that's a, uh, that's a good point. And it's all about kind of how we watch movies too. Everyone's different. Cause if they want to watch it as like, I mean, even 1917, it's like, well, did that really happen? Did he really run through that? And was it, yeah, yeah. it's like, well, look, if we, it's a, it's a dope movie and it's a, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, these aren't history lessons. Some of them can be and can be used and you can take pieces from it and, you know, show it yeah. in social studies class. Uh, yeah. So be it. But I don't, know that a director's making a movie thinking gosh i want to give the perfect representation of what happened here and what i think like and and even is benefited from with the dramatic you know the dramatization of it um is that like a lot of those even if it's like a historic take like 1917 like a sto historic event that you learn about in history class and you're gonna be like okay yeah sure whatever um but you put that in a really cool movie and people are going to like yeah. pay attention to it. Yeah. Facebook, like you get done wa watching social network and you're like, Whoa, what actually happened in yeah. the, like the founding of Facebook? Like right. whatever you're watching it on, you're going to go like, at least for me, like I'm going to go research that afterwards and see what was real, what was fake, like how that actually happened. And it gives you a better like appreciation for that company or that band or that person that yeah. you wouldn't have had before. 100%. Yeah, it's a good word. It's a good word. Now, the social network came out in the year 2010. Uh, yep. And we were thinking, you and I were bouncing around ideas of, well, what top five list could we do uh, for the social network? We had like, you know, charismatic or like interesting geniuses. Uh, we, we basically, Jesse Eisenberg movies. Like, we basically just threw out a bunch of topics that wouldn't have like just random topics. Yeah. We're like, oh, well, could we come up you with? You could think of three good ones, but it would be hard. Wouldn't be hard. Yeah. And then we just happened to think, like, wait, this movie came out in 2010. 2010. And then we looked at what movies came out in 2010. We're like, that's a challenge. We, okay. then we, yeah. There was a challenge, and then we both did some homework. Yeah. Because 2010 was a great year. So what we're going to do now is we're going to do our top fives, individual top fives. Josh, I don't know if you're no, – you've listened to Biopic. I know you're a big fan. Uh, but here's how it works uh, is we're going to go five to one, um, okay. listing our top five. What's going to happen is I'm going to say my five, you're going to say your five, my four, your four, back and forth. Now, if I have a movie that – if you name a movie at five and I have it at two – 
I'm going to say, whoa, it's our nod to big Sean here on the, uh, Bill Mary Network. I'm going to say, whoa, right. and we're not going to talk about it till the higher ranking, higher ranked okay. position, you know? So, uh, a lot of good movies came out. Let me just pull one mega mind. Okay. If you have mega mind, which came out in 2010, uh, if you're like, <laughs> dude, mega mind, my number five. And I'm like, Oh, that's my number two. But I wouldn't tell you that. I'd say, well, let's not talk about mega mind just yet. Okay. Uh, so that's, that's our example. Yeah. Mega mind came out in 2010. All right. Uh, shout out Jacob Lorienti. Good. Good loves enough. Megamind. I, I, th I think he's one of the only people I know that loves Megamind. Yeah, probably. Probably. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, Josh, we're gonna. I'm gonna let. I'm gonna let you go first. Uh, what is your number five movie uh, from 2010? Yeah. Hey, well, actually, yeah. Well, before that too. Before we get into the five, how about this? Was this a hard list to make? Oh yeah, I think. Um, I think if it was like top eight, top nine, it wouldn't be hard. Huh. Um, but there were like a solid, like probably a solid 10 movies yeah. that came out in, in 2010. Yeah. Um, and yeah, like those last two figuring out which ones to swap in and swap out were hard and the ranking of it was, was pretty difficult. Yeah. So, so yeah, those top, those top five, I think are pretty, pretty solid. It was definitely hard to, uh, come up with the ranking of like, oh, which one do I put higher? Which one do I put lower? So. Yeah. All right, well, let's start with your number five. What do you got? All right, so number five, um, I have a amazing comedy. And I think like this, this year was a great year for comedies. Yes. Um, and it's hard to put comedies in a, in a, top, in a ratings list sometimes because you're yeah. like, well, like it wasn't as dramatic. It didn't have that like, you know, cinematic look to it. Yeah. Um, but some comedies just stand the test of time. It's true. And one of those that has is The Other Guys. Whoa. Well, I'm gonna say right. well. Yeah, I'm going to say okay. well right there. Well, you're on okay. something. You're on to something. Uh, right. so which means like, we go to my number five. Okay. Uh, my number five. We'll come, we, we're going to circle back to yours. Don't worry. Oh, yeah. Uh, my number five is a uh, true grit Coen Brothers movie, Western. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll just talk about it, I guess. Uh, but no, true grit, a great, great movie. Josh Brolin, a young Haley Steinfeld. I believe she was nominated uh, for an Oscar for this movie um jeff bridges She'd, of course yeah yeah this was just a great like western and like we didn't get a lot of westerns like like westerns have kind of you know we get one every once in a while but this was like a great one like it just felt cool and it was a great like idea of like a young girl going after trying to find her dad find the the man who killed her dad yeah um and with jeff bridges is like this weird partner duo going out there <laughs> um matt damon's in it as matt well. damon was great in that movie matt damon uh labeef yeah. right isn't that his name yeah um just He's a, a texas really, ranger yeah really great cast and like it's so good that movie's so good about being immersive like you really do feel like you're in the woods you feel like you're cold yeah. um there's that one great scene where you know jeff bridges character is just riding his horse into town get trying to get Haley steinfeld back yeah uh, like really really good moments their big standoff scene uh towards the end there was really great um and yeah the, that's just the, like the like accents and the sound like the way jeff bridges yeah. talks you're like trying to understand him half the movie because you're like yeah. what what is he saying but burn, like, burn, right, yeah. yeah um uh, but he definitely like plays that character really well yeah. i i love um yeah i think that's a that's a that's a good pick yeah, like that. that's a warm movie too. Like, like warm. Like I, that one makes me feel like cozy. I don't know what it is, but that's just like yeah, very cozy. And it was a, it was a great, um, it was a great, like, country movie or not country movie. Um, it was a great w western movie, um, yeah. in like the space movie yeah era. era. Yeah, all, like, all movies are all, trying to be big and yeah. Yeah, it was all yeah. big, yeah. other planets, all that kind of stuff. Um, but they just made a really good Western. So I, re I respect that. hundred percent. All right. So what's your number four? My number four, um, is actually a number three. Um, that is toy story three. Ooh. Okay. Go yeah. Ahead. Toy story three. I mean, Pixar toy stories, the, the start of that whole empire of Pixar. Yeah. Um, and I think three is really the movie that closes it out. Like, Four, four we, was there. We did get four last summer, which is funny. Four, but, four, yeah. four was there, um, and it closes out some characters. But I think like three is the one. It's a it's a bit of a tearjerker towards the end. Yeah. Um, it 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 has a really good ending to a lot of the characters' stories. Yeah. Um, so I love I, I love it. I think you 
put any movie, if, if any Toy Story movie comes out in one of those years, uh, you have to put it in that list at some, at some point. Um, I think it was a great movie. It, it closes out some of those characters. Um, and it just being a Pixar and a Toy Story movie, it deserves a, a spot in that list. Yeah. Yeah, you know, Toy Story 3 is great. It really was, especially like as uh, as like us, our generation grew up with Toy Story mm-hmm. movies. We saw him as a kid, and then we were almost Andy's age by the time Toy Story 3 came around, and he's going off to college, and we've grown yeah. up, no longer played with toys, and that was such a, a cool thing to grow up with. Um, I don't yeah. know if a lot of like families now are going to like show their kids one and two, and then wait to show them three until they're older, yeah. or something like that, you know, but it, it's definitely cool how that movie aged, and then yeah, it wrapped it up well. It was it was kind of terrifying, actually, uh, in yeah. a few sequences. Um, You're like, what is going to happen? Like, are they all, all going to die? I didn't mind four, but I don't know why. Maybe it was because of how old I was, but three like just didn't like land well with me. And uh, three didn't land well. Three, yeah. You know, I think okay. I, I might have liked three if I was younger, but like I just uh, I loved being with the characters again. But I, to me, like two is something. Like, I don't know what it is, but Toy Story two, like Toy Story something. two was. Toy Story 2 was fun. Toy Story 2 was Al, really fun. Al's Toy Barn, like, come on. Dude. That was so yeah. cool. You got to leave the room. You had to run across the street at the cones. Uh, but Toy Story 3, no, it's notable. It was nominated for Best Picture, I believe. Yeah. It definitely won Best Animated Picture. Um, mm-hmm. Against How to Train Your Dragon. Tangled uh, Tangled also and Megamind, those were the big animated movies that came out that year. Yeah, Great movies. which I think, yeah. But I think Toy Story, you know, deserves that, that, that spot if you're talking any animated movie. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I think I think like like you said, I think the biggest the biggest reason it deserves a spot in there is because of Andy. Like, even if yeah. we uh, we got to see the characters for one more movie, um, yeah. in a weird way, even though we didn't realize that we were connected or or felt connected to Andy, and yeah. that was kind of the end of his reign. And after that, it just didn't quite feel the same with a different kid. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think it's I think it's a solid pick. Um, so my number four uh, of 2010 is a movie I actually just watched, just watched. I'd never seen it before, um, and it, it is Black Swan. Wow, bro, Black Swan. Oh boy, man, that's a good movie. That is a great, great movie. Holy cow! Like it was, um, like I'd heard about it so for so long too. Um, Natalie Portman won Best Actress for this movie, rightfully so. She was absolutely amazing. Uh, just such a visceral movie. Another movie that's like, uh, the, like that's a movie about the ballet, and and the Social Network is about Facebook. And these yeah. are probably the two <laughs> most intense movies that came out that year. And and they're both like. Just There's another so movie great. later on that's about something pretty simple too. Yeah, yeah, another <laughs> one, pretty simple. Uh, the Best Picture one. So, I mean, it was also a very simple one too. Uh, yeah. but, but Black Swan, it was just such a ride and a roller coaster and um, was just so great. And Natalie Portman just like carried that movie. You could like see it and feel it. And every cast member, there's uh, the guy who's the uh, director too. He's incredible. Mila Kunis. Uh, Mila Kunis actually to me is replaceable. I think it could have been anybody uh, yeah. so, for her role. But, yeah. So for Black Swan, like maybe my ratings are a little skewed because I ha- that's one 2010 movie that I haven't seen. Yeah. Uh, you were talking about it a few days yeah. ago, but I haven't, I haven't had the chance to see it. Totally fine. Um, so for me and any other viewers that haven't seen it, give us a little bit of like what's happening. It's a ballet movie, but like yeah. any other, without spoiling so, the movie, any other tidbits yeah. that you can give yeah, us? Yeah, no, I mean, it, essentially, I essentially it's like a, a thrill ride about a girl who tries out for the, or is in the, the New York City ballet and she's trying out for, for Swan Lake, for the, um, the Swan Queen uh, and in Swan Lake, it is the story of this beautiful, elegant swan. And then the black swan comes in, basically like tempts it and like twists it, twists the, the swan queen. It's basically like good and evil pulling at someone. And then the swan queen it sees that like, uh, it's like a king or something like that, picks a different swan. It Basically, the movie mirrors the thing that she's in. So she's okay. in Swan Lake. Um, She's like actually trying out for it and actually rehearsing for it and be- gets the part and it's all great. But in her own physical life, she is actually living it out. It's almost like she's method acting because in her head, she's dealing with good and evil pulling and it's like tearing her apart uh, because she's just giving wow. herself to it. And it's like so visceral. And there were so many scenes I was like, oh, 
like, ugh, like it's like <laughs> gross to look at. Darren yeah. Aronofsky, the director, he's he's like that. You know, a Requiem for a Dream. I haven't seen, but I know a lot of people's on a lot of people's list for movies that I will never watch a second time that were really great because it's just <laughs> so intense. And Mother was one he did, um, which was so visceral. So similar thing with me, where I'm like, that movie was amazing. But I don't think I could watch it again. <laughs> okay. Like, uh, but Black Swan is one where it's like a good amount of intensity. You get just locked in about the New York City ballet and just this piece on like what it would feel like to feel the pressure of the the biggest and best stage of ballet, uh, at least in this country, um, and this big part and whatnot. And Natalie yeah. Portman just holds it well, and yeah, that, that's how great 2010 was for movies. There's still movies that I need to watch. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've watched most of them. There's still good movies left. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, what is your number three? Number three um, is going to be Book of Eli. Oh, okay. So I have not seen Book of Eli. It's the okay. This one it's on my list. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Probably yeah. I, I, loved, I loved watching that. I remember the first time, like, I, I rewatched it a while back. And for some reason, um, it, it's po- post apocalyptic. Like, they're in this, in this setting where you don't, you're not sure what happened, but the world is completely different now. Um, and there's only a few people who are old enough to, like, kind of remember what life was like before and for some reason i thought um they were all blind i think later in the movie you realize some of them are blind um but for some reason i thought no one could see anything and then watching the movie again i was like oh that would make no sense um but it is a great movie you start out with uh (laughs) with him just going through and destroying like anyone who comes in his path like he's this like very he's, he's protecting the last bible right yeah yeah so that's 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 kind of the the narrative through it um but it starts out like he's just like this beast um and no one can stop him um but you see these really like intimate moments with him um yeah. and it's just it's it's super cool it's it's um denzel. I love post yeah denzel's amazing um i love post-apocalyptic movies um, which is amazing. Um, but yeah, I just think it's a, it's a great pick, a great movie. Um, I think the, the little, like, it's not too much is happening, hmm. but through that, like s- kind of small scale, you see so much. Um, yeah. so yeah, I think like it just, it, it, it stands, it stands there on its own. Yeah. I think book of Eli is, is pretty, pretty amazing. Take your word for it. I think that's the uh, usually in uh, usually on a biopic, um, a movie always comes up I haven't seen, whether it's on someone's desert island or in the top five that they give. Uh, and this is the first one you've given it to me, okay? Because your top right. five, I, I knew. I mean, I, I loved all those movies. So, what yeah. Eli need to watch? Yeah, um, okay, so to. my number three is a movie you mentioned at your number five, and it is The Other Guys. Okay, uh, Will Ferrell and freaking marky mark uh in a movie just about the other guys you gotta let me fly about the other guys you got dancing and high smith the, the heroes um and then you got stop humming that song i can hum if i want to i know you can i'm asking you to stop well if you're asking then i'll stop thank you Could you not smile like that? Now you're asking me to mask my emotions because of how it makes you feel? That I will not do. Seriously. Stop humming, okay? This isn't accounting or wherever the hell you and your little pocket calculator were transferred from. Forensic accounting, okay? And it's an important part of the job. Yeah, whatever. Stop being so overtly happy about doing shit work, you moron. Hey, guys, reminder. The police union picnic's coming up this weekend. Uh, my wife's making her famous deviled eggs again. My waistline's furious. It's a bad time, Bob. All right. Going to get a slice. You know what I just did? I just walked out that door 
So a couple detectives and I was about to start bad-mouthing you behind your back. But I stopped myself because my pops taught me that a man who talks behind somebody's back is a coward. Wow, I actually appreciate that. Good, because I'm going to tell you directly to your face. No, you don't have to. No, I don't like you. I think you're a fake cop. The sound of your piss hitting the urinal, it sounds feminine. Mm -hmm. If we were in the wild, I would attack you. Even if you weren't in my food chain, I would go out of my way to attack you. If I were a lion and you were a tuna, I would swim out in the middle of the ocean and freaking eat you. And then I'd bang your tuna girlfriend. OK, first off, a lion swimming in the ocean? Lions don't like water. If you'd placed it near a river or some sort of fresh water source, that makes sense. But you find yourself in the ocean, 20-foot waves, I'm assuming it's off the coast of South Africa, coming up against a full grown 800 pound tuna with his 20 or 30 friends you lose that battle you lose that battle nine times out of ten and guess what you've wandered into our school of tuna and we now have a taste of lion we've talked to ourselves we've communicated yeah. and said you know what lion tastes good let's go get some more lion we've developed a system to establish a beachhead and aggressively hunt you and your family and we will corner your your pride, your children, your offspring. How are you going to do that? We will construct a series of breathing apparatus with kelp. We will be able to trap certain amounts of oxygen. It's not going to be days at a time, but an hour, hour 45, no problem. That will give us enough time to figure out where you live, go back to the sea, get more oxygen, and then stalk you. You just lost your own game. You're outgunned and outmanned. Did that go the way you thought it was going to go? Nope. Oh! 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 Such a funny movie. And I remember at the oh, yeah. time I saw it and it was, I like, I kind of didn't get it. I remember I was so uh, like, I was like, oh man, that movie wasn't like slapstick. Like it was really smart. It was like The Office, but for cops. Oh yeah. You know, and yeah, yeah just so freaking funny uh from the little river band playing in the car that's one of my favorite bits the captain yeah. singing don't go chasing waterfalls oh i love TLC his tlc references, references to, throughout it. Alan. <laughs> each time each time he's like no no no, you you, you have to see what you're doing now right yeah he's like what I, I don't know what you're talking about yeah uh terry and alan yeah those two guys i mean they're just so funny and like for Will Ferrell to play like the the Dwight, he really is Dwight Schrute. He's playing Dwight oh, yeah. Schrute in this in this movie, and then he uh, to have that smoking hot wife and like to have this crazy background, but be totally naive when he's like telling the story about like and it and it pisses Terry off so much, so he, much. He's with he's with his wife. He he's what, what's his wife's name in the movie? Sheila. Sheila, yeah. And he keeps but 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 bye Sheila. Bye, bye, Sheila. Bye, Sheila. Hey, bye, 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 Terry. Yeah. Hey, tell, tell, tell Sheila that I miss I her. her. Yeah. And, and <laughs> Dude, yeah, it's, it's so good. And when he's like, oh, sorry about my wife. He's like, she's coming in here look like garbage. Just, it's so good, man. That movie is And like, then you meet his, his uh, first wife or his, his old girlfriend. Oh, yeah, who's also very attractive. Yeah, yeah who's also very attractive. And she's the one that's like crazy in that, yeah. in that situation. <laughs> yeah yeah dude this is just a funny movie like it's great of the time i mean this is the rock but kind of before the rock became this big thing samuel l jackson and the rock mm -hmm. especially from this point went on to be in everything um yeah it's so funny that they use those two guys like as the those are the like even as actors like those are the two guys yeah um and them jumping from the building gosh just such a hilarious scene i remember that was one that made me laugh out loud but also like scared because i was like did they just jump from the building yeah and and then uh, it plays uh there goes my hero there yeah damn. he's like wow there <laughs> wasn't even a there wasn't even an awning to jump on yeah just <laughs> yeah splash. like why would they do that <laughs> aim for the bushes uh yeah dude so yeah. good and i think it was like it was timely then and that was 2010 right mm -hmm. after like the 2008 financial meltdown mm -hmm. um and at the end like a lot of it deals with like a Finances, big you yeah. know big bank um kind of taking advantage of um, yeah. people. Um, and then it gives all those statistics at the end. Like it was really like just kind of stupid comedy, but it had very intentional uh, undertone to it. Yeah. This was, uh, yeah, I think it, this is probably Will Ferrell's most underrated movie, which like either underrated or underappreciated because like, yeah. I mean, you, everyone thinks of Step Brothers and Anchorman and maybe even Talladega Nights, but like, 
the other guys has to be in the conversation if you're going top oh, yeah. three with with Will Ferrell. And uh, yeah, it's just incredible. And honestly, I don't know that he's been the same since this movie too. Uh, hmm. He's had a lot of a lot of duds. You know, he did the yeah. campaign. He did Holmes and Watson recently. He did the House with Amy Poehler. None of those movies did well. It's probably uh, probably his like la is his most recent like amazing performance yeah. yeah where you're like gosh that was incredible yeah, anchorman 2 was also this decade and it's just like um, it was just remaking anchorman 1 yeah so since then i mean but he did go on to produce succession which is a tv show and, and shout out to will ferrell for that but yeah man i don't i don't know that he's created anything else as good yeah. get hard was not that great oh he was good in the lego movie i mean that's different yeah. um uh, some people like casa de padre but I think this is where it, this kind of where it, it was the end of his height. And it looks like it was. Yeah. I'm looking at his IMDb page now because everything else, Step Brothers, Semi Pro was before that, Blades of Glory. All of his iconic roles. Tal Digan Knights, yeah, dude. That. Or before. Even Bewitched, Kicking and Screaming, all of those, um, all before yeah. this. It's, it's crazy to think about, but that was kind of the end of his iconic run, 2010s. So that's, that's not a uh, Will Ferrell I would want to watch. But yeah. And Marky Mark, that. still Marky Mark. He's still. I was watching uh, another movie last night that has Mark Wahlberg in it. Maybe I could do a whole episode on this. But is Mark Wahlberg an actor? That's like a. It's like an interesting. Thing. I watched The Fighter last night, another movie from 2010, nominated for Best Picture. Because man, that dude is so interesting. Because like yeah. he takes himself serious in some of these movies, like The Departed, um, The Fighter. Uh, I think Boogie Nights is another one. Um, but then he's got some like silly ones. I think he's just maybe leaned into that from time to time. Well, him and Will Ferrell did that one too, uh, about Daddy's Home, which yeah. didn't do well. <laughs> Again, yeah, I, I feel like Mark Wahlberg is Mark Wahlberg, and he right. just dials he in like a yeah. little more funny or a little more like Boston tough guy. Yeah, um, and it just dials it up or down depending on what movie he's in. Yeah, he's. I have a friend who like biggest Mark Wahlberg fan you will ever meet, and like. Mark Wahlberg is everything to him, wow. um, and it's it's very interesting because I don't know I don't know if I could say that about Mark Wahlberg. He's a yeah. he's he's fun. He's great. I'll enjoy every time I see Mark Wahlberg. But you know, it's just he's got an interesting career, and yeah, I don't know if he escapes into roles, but like he might be a series like The Departed. I think might be his his best. But I haven't seen Boogie Nights. I know that's a, an iconic one for him as well. Hmm. Uh, okay, so now we're down to top two. What is your number two? Yep. My number two. Um, this is a tough one. Okay. But I'm going to go with Inception. That is also my number two. So well yeah. well done, yeah. well said. Let's... Inception, dude. They say we only use a fraction of our brain's true potential. Now, that's when we're awake. When we're asleep, our mind can do almost anything. Such as... Well, imagine you're designing a building, right? You consciously create each aspect. But sometimes it feels like it's almost creating itself, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah like I'm discovering it. Genuine inspiration, right? Mm -hmm. Now, in a dream, our mind continuously does this. We create and perceive our world simultaneously, and our mind does this so well that we don't even know what's happening. That allows us to get right in the middle of that process. How? By taking over the creating part. Now, this is where I need you. You create the world of the dream. We bring the subject into that dream, and they fill it with their subconscious. How could I ever acquire enough detail to make them think that it's reality? Well, dreams, they feel real while we're in them, right? It's only when we wake up that we realize something was actually strange. Yeah, I, ac I accidentally rewatched this one before we even talked about this topic or anything. I watched this like two weeks ago. Yeah, it's it's amazing, and we were talking about like simple concepts out of movies. Yep. Um, that's this. It's, it's it's about a dream, but it does it on such an amazing scale. Yeah. Um, I think that's another uh, Leo movie that you wonder like how he didn't win an Oscar until recently. Um, he, his performance is amazing. Um, another Christopher Nolan movie. That's amazing. Um, yeah. another score. That's amazing. Uh, great cast. I think it keeps you on the edge of your seat the whole time. It's just, uh, it's an amazing movie. 
through and through. Yeah, incredible concept, incredible cast. You're right. Uh, great moment. That's a score too. That might be my favorite Nolan and Zimmer score pairing. Like that's one that it comes up on shuffle time time. I gotta let it ride. Gotta yeah. let it ride. So uh, a great movie. Um, that one. It's it's hard because Inception's like one. I'm like, dude, they could easily do a series about Inception, like mm-hmm. an HBO series or something like that. Definitely a prequel. Definitely a sequel to Inception because there's so much to that world that it's yeah. like, dang, there's and you kind of you kind of start right in the middle of the story. Yeah. And he they, yeah. they reference a lot of things in there where he's like, hey, it'd be like the old days, or I need someone who as good as you are at this, and like yeah. there there's clearly like a past there, and they had been doing this for a while. Um, so there's something there uh just really it's such a full movie that like it's just like a good full meal to where every bit every ingredient every side dish the entree the dessert the drink every little bit comes together so well and like yeah yeah just an incredible sci-fi movie but it's also a, a crime or a heist movie and uh, you know it's got some funny moments tom hardy's in there just being kind of silly uh you know joseph gordon levitt ellen page Michael Caine, um, like yeah. an incredible cast. Yeah, yeah, and just a little, another little honorable mention for for Leo. That wasn't even the only movie that yeah. he put out that year. Um, Shutter, Island. Shutter Island was that year. Him and Mark Ruffalo, yeah. and that was that was pretty amazing. I love the story. It completely like takes you the whole movie to figure out what's going on. Yeah. Um, and then you start denying it as the character is denying it. But, right. but yeah, like he, he also put out another amazing movie that year. Yeah. He's a beast. I remember there's a meme that came out that said like, if you watch Shutter Island, he gets off the island onto the Titanic and then sinks to the oh, bottom yeah. of the water and then washes up in Inception. So it's like a good little Leo trilogy there. There you uh, go. Pretty clever. You know, the internet. Uh, yeah. yeah. Shutter Island's a pretty good one too. That's, that's another like Scorsese doing something different too that's what's great about mm-hmm. that movie but again yeah, yeah. 2010 un- unreal um inception's amazing uh really does live up to it so we're down to number one um what was your number one movie of 2010 yeah um well again we have the same number two i have a feeling we'll have the same number one because i know how much mo- how much you love this movie but what we talked about already the social network social network yeah to me it did it as well yeah it's number one social network's the best movie that year maybe the best movie of the decade um that was one thing that a lot of people were talking about the, as the decade ended um but yeah man just stands the test of time and to me so rewatchable uh that's yeah. one thing maybe we didn't say earlier but to me it's one it's like it's just it's just so good, man. And every scene just feels so amazing. And um, yeah. it's a story that like, yeah, man, I just get something new every time. And that's why I went and read the book. Uh, again, The Accidental Billionaires, I believe it's written by Ben Mesrich or something like that. Mesrich. Um, okay. Yeah, dude. Really yeah, I think, I think that's why it, it stands the test of time a little more. Yeah. Um, because it's so rewatchable. Like you look yeah. at like our, the rest of our lists and like Inception – uh, book of eli like some of those more serious heavy. movies yeah um they're heavy they have a lot to them uh big concepts or big like you know going through like social network it's easy to digest um but still really really good um and having that real world connection kind of kind of drives it home um yeah. but yeah it's a it's a it's a great movie. It's it's easily the fastest two hours as well. Like I, it flies by for me. Oh, yeah. Like I'm I'm all like I was I'm watching it. I'm like, oh my gosh, Eduardo just froze the bank account. We're we're close to the end here. And I'm like, oh no, yeah. well, like I, I let's go back to Harvard. That was so fun. Yeah, it, it, move, it moves quick. Let's see the final part, which I think yeah. portrays the story well. Like the yeah. fact that it's fast paced. Yeah, yeah. Like that's that's how it happened. It it was all like they were trying to keep up the whole time. It was yeah. just a fast moving, fast moving story. Well, there it is. That's our top five. Uh, we've said so much about social network. We could say even more. Um, yeah. We did it. What a hard year. I'm going to throw out some honorable mentions that year um, because the best picture winner, the King's speech. I watched that yesterday. I think you maybe did as well. Yep, I did. And it was one I was waiting to watch King's speech and go, oh, this was stupid. This shouldn't have won. But to me, dude, it was a pretty great movie. Um, no, it was. Yeah. It was um, and, freaking great. and it was nominated for almost everything that year. And rightfully so. I've been told that it's like not as good as social network, which I agree, um, or true grid or inception or black swan. And all those were nominated, but I'm still like, I'm not mad that it won, I guess. No. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think like 
take that out of 2010 yeah. and it could have won most years. Yeah. Um, and it did in 2010, but I don't know if it should have. Yeah, that one's um, on yeah, Netflix think, as well. Yeah. Um, but I think King's Speech was, was incredible. Yeah. Uh, I definitely give that um, – an honorable mention as well. Honorable mention. Uh, Insidious, I love. Great scary movie came out that year. That oh, one wow. is one I own. Insidious, Date Night, Steve Carell, and Tina yeah. Fey. If, if I was to swap out the other guys for another comedy, it would be Date Night. Uh, Harry Potter 7. So Deathly Hallows Part 1 came out. The camping trip one, as they call it. Uh, Dinner, Dinner for Schmucks came out in 2010. Dinner for Schmucks, yes. Yeah, Steve Carell. He was on a roll. Another then. great Steve Carell that um, movie. Kick-Ass, The Town, um, other popular movies. Easy A, 127 Hours. Tron, Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, Grown Ups, uh, dude, a great year. That's like that's yeah. an insanely great year. Yeah, it was, it was incredible, and that what's that's what made it so hard to find. Yeah, five great five. movies, yeah. and I think we could have easily swapped in a, a couple of those for other movies. Yeah, 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 man. Well, all the a few of these movies actually are streaming. You can find them somewhere. Definitely the Social Network. That was one we highlighted a lot yep. this episode. Go watch that on Netflix. You have plenty of time. I know you do. You're quarantining if you're watching. You can uh, you can watch yeah. all ten of these movies that we mentioned, um, and the honorable mentions. Um, yeah, f- find them because find you have them. time. Rent them. We have. We have. Yeah, send a, you know DM at the Dylan Berry Network on Instagram, and I will I'll rent it for you. Uh, or I'll send you that voodoo login. All right. Whatever we need, we'll, we'll get you to watch these movies. Uh, well, Josh, dude, you did it. You did a biopic, man. You, we made yeah. it. We did it from thousands of miles away, but, uh, or maybe just 600 just, miles away. Just, just, yeah, just a few hundred. <laughs> a couple hundred. Oh, okay. Millions. We were millions of miles away, and the coronavirus were, brought us together. Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah dude. Thanks for having me. It was a blast. I, I love it. I think yeah, it dude. was great. I don't. Uh, I think. Yes. Oh yeah. Um, I I don't think this is the last time you'll be on the DBN. I feel like. Uh, I you, hope not. You got, you got some feature looks. Uh, you got some skills that I want to pull out of you. Um, you teach the world how to. You know, you you taught me something very valuable yesterday. And oh um, yeah, maybe the DBN will get to see that again. Yeah, yeah. I think I think. Uh... I'll, I'll show you guys some things. I'll say that. I'll show you guys some things. Friend of the show now, Josh McGuire. So glad you're on. Uh, Josh, you're on Instagram at Josh McGuire, right? At uh, Josh McGuire on everything. On everything. That's where you can find him, folks. Go and just get mad at him that he didn't mention, um, you know, Harry Potter 7 in his top five. And that he gave the social network a 3.8 out of five. Go light him up. Yeah. Like bully yeah, him. Just get, just get mad at him me, right man. now. That's what that's what Dylan does. Yeah. So if you want to be a part of the DBN, I guess that's what you have to do. I want to get everyone who's a fan of the DBN to go and cyber bully you for that three point eight rating. Um, Thank you for that. Until you know you get it up. So that means on Letterbox probably a, a four, right? You got to round up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I th- I think I did give it a four on on Letterbox. Yeah, well, you probably did it wrong, and we'll we'll show you how to do that a little later. But all right, Josh, thanks so much for coming on. Uh, that is a wrap. Thank you for having me for us on biopic number. 14 14 all right and we're streaming on anchor now anchor's sending us all like in all different ways which is great uh yeah dude what, what else? everyone is so there's a funny meme that was like you know that quarantine's getting bad because podcast mics are out they're out on amazon so <laughs> um can't find them anywhere in an undersaturated market, we have the DBN. Well, thanks, Josh, and thanks to all my listeners. Um, go on iTunes, give us a five-star review, tell us what you think, and uh, we'll see you again soon. <laughs> <laughs>